And the last issue is what happened recently with this fight concerning this brother from the, mis the mixed martial artist, Habib Khabib. May Allah Azza wa give him good and give it us good. After that fiasco transpired, you look on social media, and many of the Muslims who are giving da'wah on social media, we find a lot of our youngsters think it's your religious obligation to hurry up and jump out there and give you a position in your opinion. When in fact, when things like that happen, it's better for you to be quiet and to relax and let the dust settle. Everybody has a religious responsibility to give da'wah to Allah. Everybody. Tell people about me even if it's something small, one ayah, one hadith. So you get in where you fit in, you give da'wah to Allah. But in giving da'wah, you have to have some knowledge about what you're talking about. You have to have some experience. You have to have some hikmah. You have to have some common sense. And when these big issues take place, big issues that the whole world is talking about, you should relax and take it easy. Who said you have to speak the very next day? Who said that? Who said that? You know what that comes from? Part of that comes from this culture of getting the most hits. Getting the most people to comment on your page or something like that. Just relax. Just relax and let things calm down. And then make a point. As it relates to this issue after it happened, we heard and we read where people were saying, this brother is an example for the Muslims. He's a hero for the Muslims and on and on and on and on. And that's extreme. That's not in the, that's not in the middle. That's not in the middle at all. Because without any shot of a doubt, mixed martial arts, the way they do it is haram. Allah doesn't love it. Prophet Muhammad doesn't love it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen, there are many things that prove that you are Muslim. Prove that you have iman. You're wearing that fob is a proof you have iman, inshallah. You staying in this darts after Salat al-Isha, you don't get any extra credit. You're not getting extra credit in university. You're here because you want to be. And some of you have your, your wudu, believing that the malaika asking Allah to forgive you. That's a delil of your iman. Some of you want to stretch out, but you don't put your feet out like this. You put your feet in because you're respecting the qibla. And you want to sit like a student of knowledge. And when that was mentioned, some of you put your feet in. That's a sign of iman. Inshallah. It's a sign of iman. The beard that you have is a sign of Iman. Many, many signs that prove that you are Muslims, inshallah. One of the best signs to prove that you have Iman is this issue of loving the Muslims and how you love and what you love, who you love. He said, as Abdullah bin Mas'ud mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awthaq urul Iman al-hubbu fillah wal-bugdu fillah. The strongest, most important band, like a band on your ring, band, circle, institution. The strongest band of El Iman is loving for Allah and hating for Allah. Love the people you love moderately. The day may come where he is your enemy. If your mother and your father fight against you in El Islam, you have to draw a line and take a position against them. If your wife or your husband went against this religion, you have to take something and draw a line and you tell them, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ الدين. You have to take a position. You have to. And that's why we have all of those ayat of the Quran. Many, many, many. You won't find the people believing in Allah in the last day, loving those people who wage war against Allah and his messenger. They're cursing the companions. Got to draw a line. Your community, your community. The people who are listening to you doing the khutbah. They're listening to you. And you know people believe this, people believe that about the companions or whatever. You have to address the issues. You can't try to placate them all the time. Every answer that you give, the answer is trying to make people like you. You don't want to make people not like you intentionally no but the truth has to be said so when someone asks you the truth it's going to make you unpopular 
What is the reality of a Salafiyah? What you have to say what the truth is. You can't say, if I answer it correctly, they're not gonna like me. Now you have to have wisdom. And similar to this is this issue. This brother who fought. Now we have to be balanced. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong now. Mixed martial arts, I would advise everybody to learn that. Don't be fat. Don't be out of shape. Don't be a person who people can beat you up. But watching that stuff, that stuff is more haram than what Amir Khan is doing. You know, King Khan. You know what I'm talking about? The boxer. That is haram boxing. Mixed martial arts is more haram because it's pugilistic. Breaking people's arms. You understand? Putting people to sleep, knocking them out. It's not permissible. Not to mention, not to mention the way they dress, the lady walking around, the gambling that's going on, the khamar, all of that stuff is designed to take people away from the remembrance of Allah Azza So what is loving for Allah and hating for Allah? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man ahabba lillahi wa abghad lillahi wa ata lillahi wa mana lillahi faqad istakmala imanuhu. Anyone who loves for Allah, hates for Allah, gives for Allah, and he refuses to give for Allah, he has complete iman. Loving for Allah means you love people according to how close you perceive them being upon the obedience of Allah. And you hate people based upon your perception of how far they are from the religion. So the non-Muslim, the non-Muslim, you're not going to love the non-Muslim more than you hate the worst Muslim. Because although the worst Muslim is far from Al-Islam, may Allah protect us from that, nonetheless, he doesn't have shirk and kufr. And we got to be fair and balanced. Listen to what we hear. It's not fair, it's not balanced. Listen, because this may be you. This may be your wife or some your sister. The Muslim sister, she wants a khula. And it's not easy to get a khula. Because sometimes the brother she's married to, he doesn't treat her well as if he wants her and wants to keep her. He treats her bad. Forces her to come to the masjid here at Green Lane. They have this problem. She wants a khula. The imam at Green Lane, the administration at Green Lane, can't just say, okay, you have a khula because she walks into the room. They have to call that man up, come in for a meeting. He doesn't come for the meeting. He runs away. He doesn't answer the phone. Two months, three months, four months, one year. And she's, she didn't get a khula yet. And she's tired of that. And rightly so. And then she gets so tired. She says, you know what? You Muslims don't want to help us. You don't want to help the women. You guys are against women. And I should go to the kuffar. Because they're not Muslims. You get justice with them. That's not balance for her to get upset and to say that. What can the masjid do? What can the masjid really do? Yo, wali, the wali of the girl can't force him to do that if he's not cooperating. And it can be her own cousin, her father and uncles. They ain't they cannot force, and you want the masjid to force? What are you talking about? Can't do that. That statement of hers, I'm going to get justice from the kufa, I can't get it. Only the Quran and the Sunnah, there's justice. There's no justice in it. What are you talking about? Justice with the non-Muslims? Is that just what they're doing to Palestinians? Is that just what they're doing to Iraq and Syria? Is that justice what they're doing? What, do you, what makes the lady say that? That anger. Two Muslim businessmen, the same thing. They come to the imam. The imam judges for one. But he can't make the guy give him the money. The brother gets upset and he says the same thing. I can only get justice with the non-Muslims. That's not balanced. That's not fair. So we love for Allah, we hate for Allah, based upon many issues. So why is Habib or Habib the perfect example? He's not the example for the Muslim. The example for the Muslim are the prophets and the messengers, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in. The example for the Muslim are the companions, radiallahu anhum, and we judge people based upon that. But we have to be fair and just. Don't get it twisted and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. One of the reasons that make a lot of Muslims like what happened and support this man is we're living in an environment right now, there's a lot of Islamophobia where people can talk bad about our religion and misconstrue our religion. Draw Muhammad Day and be disrespectful for our religion, curse our religion and say all kinds of things. And as Muslims of the Sunnah, we say, 
we hate that, but it's a way we're going to go about showing our displeasure. We're not going to go overboard. Now, when you get an individual who one on one in the ring, someone was saying those things and then he almost cracks his jaw and makes you say, good job. Another thing is the Muslim knows how the warrior nature of the Muslims used to be. Not like now where our countries are trampled upon, the resources of our country is stolen from right under our feet, and we're weak, as the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, weak like the foam of the ocean. But now we see there's an individual who is not just defeating people, but I have to be honest, he mauled that man. You know, to maul someone, M-A-U-L, mauled him. Mauled, decimated that guy. So when a Muslim sees that, it reminds him, Wow, that's the strength of the Muslim. So that resonates with us. But you have to stay balanced. That doesn't make MMA, doesn't make it halal. Doesn't make that brother our example. Muhammad Ali, rahmatullahi alayhi, the boxer, Muhammad Ali. He used to bag, brag. He was boxing the man and he told the man, say my name is Muhammad Ali. But the man kept saying, cash is clay. And he just beat him up. He beat him up. A lot of Muslims during that time felt proud because of that moment. He's not apologizing about his religion. So here you have that brother saying Alhamdulillah. Here you have that brother defending his honor, his religion, his wife, his father, his nephew. So we can understand that. But don't go overboard. Does Allah like or love mixed martial arts? Not like that. Wallahi, not like that. Not like that at all. So as Muslims, as Muslims, we have to be truthful and honest, upright enough, knowledgeable enough to be able to say the truth in those issues. Mixed martial arts is haram like that, watching it like that. Now, if that man had covered up his aura and was being displayed in another way, then it would be even better than boxing it because they always punch in the face in boxing if they took that out of the equation. Just wrestling and all that kind of stuff, that's from our religion. If you recall in the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Badr, there was a duel that started the battle off and it was the practice of the Arabs. Three people from the Muslims came forward, three people from the non-Muslims came forward and both sides were looking and they were spectators to see what was going to happen. Finally, the two armies met each other. But before there's a melee, these three come and these three come. And when the Muslims defeated those three people, what it did in the minds and the hearts and the spirit of the Muslims, it goes to show. Yes, when he beat that man up, when he mauled him and did what he did and made him submit, that happiness that the companions felt at that duel is the same kind of happiness that a Muslim will feel. Someone speaking bad about our religion, about our religion. And here we have someone as if he is representing all of us. So... We understood that, but stop right there and don't say that he is the example. He's the example in terms of if a Muslim has to hold on to his religion, but you can't say this guy over here is selling drugs and he's fearless in selling drugs and he's very smart the way he's selling drugs and he made a drug empire. He's a baron. Uh, he's a good example for the Muslims. No, what he's doing is haram. Although in what he's doing, he has itqan. You know there's a hadith. In Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shayin. Allah wrote perfection on everything. So he's doing it with perfection. Is that what that hadith meant? To be a perfect drug dealer? That's not what that hadith meant. You can't use that hadith out of context. So a person is not a good example in that which is impermissible. It's not a good example in that which is impermissible. This is what we want to present concerning this third hadith of the 40 hadith of the Muslim personality. Ikhwati fillah. Stay balanced. Stay balanced. I know people who really love boxing. They could tell you the fights that have taken place from now, this year, all the way to I don't know how many years ago. They are experts when it comes to information and how to box. But they have enough deen to say, enough deen to say, but boxing is haram. I know some people who are very good in chess, very good chess players, very good in chess players. 
you don't know what you're doing, those guys will checkmate you in seven, eight, nine moves. But they'll say, but chess is impermissible. The least is ikhtilaf, but it's impermissible. Don't be one of those people who come and you have no fiqh about how to love and about how to hate. Okay, Ikhwani, if you guys have any questions, inshallah, five minutes, we'll do with your question really quick about the daras. And if not, inshallah, we'll call it a day. Halindakum shay? When a person is making dua, should his supplication be completely, absolutely quiet? This hadith that we mentioned, as well as the ayat that we mentioned, and there are other ayat of the Quran, Udu Rabbukum Tadarraam wa Khufiatan, Ennu Hula Yuhibbul Mu'tadeen, make dua to your Lord with humility, wa Khufiatan, and quietly. Allah doesn't like those people, doesn't love those people, and Mu'tadeen, those people go overboard by making dua loud. So it's better to make dua quietly when you hear it yourself. When you hear it yourself. When you hear it yourself. Because it's less apt to be a sign of a riya. The person is not showing off. As for just making a dua within himself and he's not moving his lips, the scholars of Islam said this is not reading in Islam. So when you read for the five prayers or the silent prayers, you shouldn't stand there reading Alhamdulillah, in yourself like this, and you're just not moving. That's not called al-qira'ah to the Arabs. It's not called reading. So you read and you move your lips. So in this instance, he makes dua low. Unless, unless the situation necessitated or dictated that it should be loud. He's making dua of qunut or something like that. And the people are going to say, Ameen. He's making dua from the mimbar, which is the sunnah after the khutbah. And the people are going to say, Ameen, without raising up their hands. Any more questions, Akhwani? Any more questions? Tafadda ya akhi. What's the ruling of watching boxing? I'm not going to say it's haram to watch boxing because there can be a situation where the ring and the actual match is being regulated. They have head guards and they've both been instructed, don't hit to the head, don't punch the face. The Prophet told the man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who got into an argument with another man and he slapped him in his face. And when that man who was slapped came and complained, he said to the companion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tadribu fil wujuh, inna allaha khalaqa adam ala surati. Don't punch people in the face. Don't slap in the face. Because Allah created Adam in the image of this person who gets slapped in the face. So you have to honor Bani Adam. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا Bani Adam. We have honored Adam's children and we put him up walking on his feet. We put him up. So don't dishonor Allah's creation by slapping and beating the head, beating the face. So what happens is if that's regulated, it's permissible. As for the boxing that you're asking about right now, it's not permissible to sit and to watch those boxing matches. It's not permissible to sit and to watch those boxing matches the way we see it right now. The fighting, trying to knock the people out, it's not permissible. Trying to knock them out, not permissible. It's not permissible. Trying to hurt the guy, and we gave a talk about that after our brother Imran Khan, King Khan, when he gave his fight and... Liverpool that he won. Not permissible. So mixed martial arts is even worse than that. Any more questions? I thought you was going to say, but if your wife wants to box you or something like that, I was going to say, subhanAllah. A lady wants to go to the gym. It's permissible for her to go to the gym. She doesn't have to wear hijab, jilbab, anything like that. But she should stay decent. She doesn't have to cover up all of herself. As long as that there's not going to be any fitna. She knows that there's no um, CCTV taking pictures of her, taking recordings of her. Men have access to it. She knows that in the gym, 
No one is going to go there to tell a man or someone else outside what he saw of her mahasin. So it's permissible. It's permissible for her to uh, appear in front of the women uh, with her arms exposed, wearing what she normally wouldn't wear. She can appear in front of her sisters, in front of her daughters, like that. It's permissible. Even in front of like her, her servants and things like that. And some of the ulama said in Islam, even women from other religions, Yahud and Nasara, but she has to have some level of awareness. She has to feel Allah Azza wa Jal. She has to feel Allah Azza wa Jal. She shouldn't go to small heath leisure center over there and go swimming 